Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be doing our elementary OS My Setup, similar to what I did with the Pop! OS and the Manjaro KDE. Yeah, we're going to be doing it on the elementary OS. And I don't know what I want to call these series because I could actually call it from like start to fin. I don't know. Anyway, leave a comment down below if I, if I should title these a little bit different. But anyway, let's get started. <laughs> Now I do want to mention that I just got the Cloner Alliance Flint Box. That's the HDMI capture device that I'm going to be using to capture this. So you're going to see firsthand if the quality is a lot better or worse. That's also going to be the same box that I'm going to be using for live for later in the future. So yeah, let me know down in the comments and I also leave a link down in the description below for that box. They did send it to me for free and I am kind of like testing everything out. Also, if in any time in this video that I am going a little bit too fast, obviously you could always pause, but I will have a pay spin of all the links and everything that I went through. Uh, this is more of a raw cut. You're going to see me Googling everything just to get everything all set up. So let's begin. So here we have the first login and you're going to see like a little menu here. It's going to go through. Do you want to turn on your location services, stuff like that, night light, temporary files for housekeeping, and they'll tell you about apps. But that's basically about it now one of the first things i do on all my linux distros is sudo app update just so i grab the latest repositories and then i also do a sudo app dish upgrade if there is some packages to be upgraded so sudo app this upgrade now i also keep in mind if i see any kernel patches in here or something like that i will reboot the system but it seems like they're just doing some update with the springboard and wing panel and stuff like that so it's nothing that i really have to worry about right now now after i install that i do grab a browser so i would grab firefox and let that install as well because they ship with uh epiphany so i don't really like that browser because a lot of things don't work on there so i just stick with firefox you can use chrome if you want now one of the things i do do i do do when i install firefox is i get rid of this ugly title bar uh, a lot of people actually don't know about this you go to customize disable the title bar and it looks so much cleaner there you go um, one of the things that you have to install on elementary os is elementary tweaks that's something that they hide and you don't see so we're gonna have to install that so what i would google is elementary tweaks Again, you're gonna have all these links already on the page pin, so you don't have to really like pause here. But if you do run into a problem, you could always see what I'm doing. I'm gonna copy this and then paste this into my terminal. And I disable that precaution warning because I already know what I'm putting in. Oh, I don't have software property common. So sudo app install software property commons dash y just to let it install. And now I should be able to grab PPAs. So let's up arrow that back to the PPA. There we have it. Install elementary tweaks. Okay, so we're gonna have a new option in our settings called elementary tweaks. Here we could actually set up the dark variant, which I like, it changes everything to the dark. And also the window control layout, I like to change it over to the window style. So you have the minimize, maximize, and uh, X on the right side. And another thing I change here is the files. I don't like the single click option right over here because I tend to accidentally click on stuff that I shouldn't be or shouldn't have. And then it opens like a text document by accident. So I tend to do the double click method. So you can disable it over here. While we're in the settings, I also like to change since uh, the, the font size, but since we don't have like a DPI, like partial scaling or fractional scaling in the DPI, I would like to change this over to like a little bit of a larger font. So everything looks a little bit better. And in the docs, I kind of leave this for a 1080 screen. It looks pretty good, but you could also change this to a larger icon. I'll just leave it normal. So let's close that out. If I reopen that, it's going to actually be dark. You see that? That's a really cool thing. Now that I got that installed, the next thing we need to install is something called the system tray. Elementary OS does not have a system tray and that bothers me a lot because if you're using Steam or using Remina or using anything that requires that system tray, you can't access it to close out of the applications or hit the quick menu. So I'm going to go to elementary 
OS system tray. And I tend to use this stack exchange, which is the first one. Um, I've done this many times, so I already know this works. I'm gonna paste that and also grab this ahead of time so I could just paste it in there and grab all the software that I need. Now, we also have to modify a little file called indicator application. That, so I'm gonna do sudo nano etc xdg auto start indicator applications. Hitting tab will auto complete. That's how come it looks like I'm typing so fast, but it's really just auto typing it for me. Here I have to add Pantheon. And here's a little other trick. So if I was to do sudo service um, light DM restart, you're gonna notice that yes, now that I have the system tray, you see that? It gives me the network manager notification. So now I actually have two like ethernet things. So if you have Wi-Fi, you'll see two Wi-Fi things. I don't need that anymore. So what I'm gonna do is sudo mv move xtc etc xdg auto start and there's this application called nm applet desktop we're going to rename that to the same area auto start and i'm going to rename it to old now if i was to sudo service light dm restart and restart that again and log back in uh, we're no longer gonna see that, but we still have the system tray. So that's that's basically it for that. All right, so moving on, now that we have the wing panel installed and everything, um, I'm gonna check it out just to make sure that everything is working. Uh, I actually don't like this view, so I'm gonna switch it over to this little view, and you can see it's already dark. Everything's in dark theme. And if I go over to files, let me drop this over here because I use this a lot. This should be also dark. Awesome. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually look for a wallpaper just to blend everything in. So uh, let's do Firefox, drop this down here because that's what I'm gonna be using a lot. And the website that I like to go to for wallpapers would be wallpaperflare.com. You've probably seen this wallpaper before. This is the one that I've used a lot. Um, and I like this website because if you select something like this, it'll find everything that's similar. So instead of using that wallpaper this time, let's grab this one because that kind of works with our theme a little bit. It's a little blue, but um, it's fine. Choose the resolution that you want to download, which I'm going to do 1080. And then it's going to give you a download. I'm going to save this and open this up, cut this out, move it over to my pictures. And let's turn this into our desktop wallpaper. Now, it looks really good and all, but you could see that the dock doesn't match. There's a little hidden secret in this. If you hold control and right click on the dock, it'll actually give you a preference menu. This, you could actually change your theme. So I'm just gonna change it over to transparent, which makes it look a little bit better. You could also change the font size and the way you want it to work, like auto hide and all that other stuff. So this is pretty cool. Uh, another thing is I add the CPU monitor most of the time so I can see what my computer is doing without having to use like a conky screen. And also if you're on a laptop, I would recommend using the battery icon. And if you use a lot of clipboard, probably Clippy. But yeah, this is a very cool option. Next up I would do is install my graphic card. So I would go into Lutris graphic drivers and this will give me a Linux install of how to do it. And it's pretty good. Um, I've been following this for a while. There's actually the Proton version, which is very similar to the instructions as well. And since I'm using 1804, I gotta follow this instruction and I'm just gonna copy this over to a terminal. While this is happening, I could, I'm gonna show you something really cool. Now, what I've noticed is that if I was to do picture in picture mode, I could do it across desktops. So let me grab this, um, grab this, just to make sure there's uh, more updates and we're gonna grab all, to, all those packages. And then I'm gonna install this for 32 bit support. But while this is happening, what's cool, like I said, Windows key F gives you a picture in picture mode. You can see it's going like that. 
Now, if I'm on a de separate desktop, I can still see what's going on on my first desktop. And it's really good because when I'm doing remote desktop stuff or anything that I have to, I don't know, it requires one screen and then I can hop over to a next and do something else and I can monitor my first screen. That's, that's really cool. So we're gonna paste the next command, which is installing the 32-bit drivers because a lot of games run on 32-bit, uh, especially like Steam. And I could keep that picture in picture mode up just so I know when it's gonna be done, even though it doesn't really require it. And pop this in there. What's another cool thing is that um, Elementary OS has something called side load, which allows you to install like flat pack and all that stuff. So I'm gonna do that and show you guys flat hub, I think that's what I need to use. Flat hub, there's this software that I always use um, called Peak, which is a GIF or GIF recorder for your desktop. So if I hit install over here and it says open with side load, it will actually install it without having to do anything. So it's really cool. I like it. You could also install Snap if you want to use Snap Package uh, as well. But either way, you can use FlatHub or Snap. FlatHub's already put in. Uh, another thing that I always install is sudo app install gnome disk utility. Now this gives you the option to mount ISOs. So let me pop in a little USB right here that has an ISO in here. Um, let me go to the file manager and I pop over to my USB. And if you take a look at this ISO, if I was to right click open with, there's, it just says other application. I can't mount it or anything. So what you would do is install GNOME Disk Utility and that unlocks the option. So let me close this out and reopen it. And now if I go here, I get Disk Image Mounter. So I can now mount disks. That's very helpful if you're gonna do stuff, especially if you require mounting disk or installing ISOs. Another thing that I like to install is uh, GDB. So sudo app install GDB. That will unlock the few, let me, before I right click. So if I was to go into say, um, what do I got over here? Resolve. And I need to install libssl. If I go open, it's other applications. So if I install this, all right, close this out. reopen files, right click on this. Now I could install it with Jebby package manager. So if I double click this, it'll actually open this and I can install the package. So those are the, you know, make your life a little bit easier when you're trying to navigate without having to use terminal. Another thing I do is sudo app install genome system monitor. This way it gives me the little, um, program that shows what my computer is kind of doing and if I need to close any tasks without having to use like HTOP and stuff. Now, everything's pretty much set up as far as like getting the graphic drivers working, uh, the programs that I need to run, I can install Steam on here. And while we're on that topic, I actually released my first, my second video on my gaming channel to install Steam games on Linux using literally this setup. Uh, yeah, go check it out. It will be out on Sunday and I'll leave a link down in the description below for that channel. Um, anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. I do want to test out uh, I do want to test out the latest Ubuntu DDE, which is Debian Desktop or Desktop Environment, and that just came out like a day or two ago, and I, I'm really excited for that because I like uh, Deepin Desktop. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing, also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.